Good morning. Today I'm going to be reading from Deuteronomy 25 and verse 5. I'm going to quickly explain to you some strange concepts, something that is strange to us uh, today, and that is called the Leverite marriage. Now, what is that all about? Let me explain. When a person could not bear a child, a man, if a man could not have a child prior to his death, there was a law in ancient Israel that that man's brother had to bear a child for the brother that is deceased. And the reason that would be is so that that child could then carry the name of the deceased brother so that the name of the brother could continue in the earth and that his name would not be blotted out from the register of life which was in Israel or blotted out of the Israel, Israelite family, that he would not have died completely. In other words, it was a way of saving this man from death itself. Now, should it, be, should it take place, and you can go and read this from Deuteronomy uh, 25, verse 5 to 11, should it happen that this brother-in-law is not willing to take his brother's, that is deceased's, wife, and bear children for him. Then the wife had to go to the elders of the city, and they would go and speak to the man. If the man still refused to bear children for his brother, then the woman was allowed to go to the man in the the gates of the city, untie his sandal, take the sandal, and from that day, that man whose sandal was taken would be called the his family would be called the family of the one whose sandal was untied because he refused to keep his brother's name alive. That is what it is all about. So this message is actually about keeping somebody alive according to the traditions of the time. It is uh, the brother has died and now kind of raising his name from the dead and making it possible for him to continue So a brother that wouldn't want to do that didn't have a lot of respect for the deceased brother and uh, he didn't have a lot of respect for the wife and the name of the brother that has died. It's basically saying, if you died, then you're dead and I'm going to do nothing about it. Now this concept of untying a sandal was well known in Israel back then. They knew what it meant. John the Baptist came and he was baptizing at the Jordan River and then the people were looking at him as if he would bring salvation to Israel. And he said to them, listen, I can't save you from the dead. Maybe you coming here now to the Jordan River and you're confessing your sins. But as you are confessing your sins and we acknowledge that we are not bearing fruit, we don't have fruit, uh, the name of humanity is dying out. We are awaiting someone that is greater than me. I cannot bring you fruit, but there is one coming after me, and I'm not worthy to untie his sandal. So in order to be worthy to untie his sandal, it would mean that the one coming after John the Baptist would be Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus would have, uh, in order to untie his sandal, it meant that he would have been in a place where he says, no, I'm not willing to make the name of man continue in the earth. So here Jesus Christ appears, he's baptized by John the Baptist, he rises up out of the water, and John is not worthy to untie his sandal. What does that mean? That means that Jesus said, I am willing to unite myself. It's basically God saying, I'm willing to unite myself with uh, humanity and raise them from the dead and give them life. Now we see this on a grand scale as pertaining to the resurrection, but I want to say to you that Jesus Christ is also 
your kinsman redeemer. He is the one that will redeem your life from destruction, will redeem you from death. For he is a God that is not walking in the consciousness of our inabilities as someone that condemns, but he's walking in the consciousness of our inabilities as someone that provides aid and help and bring forth life. So I want to say to you, you can look at John the Baptist and how he has said, I'm not worthy to untie his sandal. And from there know that you will also be able to say that you are not worthy to untie his sandal. For he has already died. He's already been raised from the dead. He's already poured out his spirit on this earth. And he's got you in mind. His sights are on you. And he is your redeemer. You will never be able to say, I've got the right to untie the sandal of Jesus Christ, for he's already fully committed him to your well-being, and that well-being is defined in a, a life that shares in the fullness of the life of God. Remember, God smiles over your life. He loves you. He wants to see your name continue in the earth. He wants to see the name of humanity continue in the earth. And you are not excluded. This was not just for Israel back then. This was not just for people, uh, some other people. No, it is for you. I want to end off by just reading Psalm 103. I'm only going to read up to verse 5. Listen to what David says. He says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. And when he talks about soul, he's not just talking about the inner man. He's talking about his whole life. His whole being. He says, all my innermost being, praise his holy name. So he says, when he says, uh, praise the Lord, oh my soul, he says, my whole being, that is what he's talking about, the deepest part of my existence, praise his holy name. And what is the name of the Lord? The name of the Lord is basically eternal existence eternal life that is what it boils down to it says praise the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits and this is the benefits that we have in jesus christ who forgives all your sins you might look at your life and you might say how do i have a right to continue to li- to live uh you know there is a shortcoming in my life my name is being blotted out let me tell you something we have a redeemer we've got a kinsman redeemer here we've got somebody that we are not worthy to untie his sandal therefore the scripture says he forgives all your iniquity he delivers you from all your weakness that leads unto death it says here he heals all all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. That pit is death itself. And he crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfy your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Can you see he's talking about renewing your youth, uh, bringing forth eternal life rejuvenating your complete life to the point that it can only be described the magnitude of it can only be described as what it was described in the resurrected jesus wherein he was raised from the dead bless the lord O my soul forget not any of his benefits who redeems your life from destruction hallelujah man I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the one that has redeemed your life from destruction. And we will never be able to say we are worthy to untie his sandal. God bless.